Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Beards and Bitcoins. We are a crypto podcast for the man's man and, yes, the ladies who love him. I am Jay Chains and joined with me in the studio is my man, BitBoy. What's up, Dougie? Dude, what is going on, man? It's so nice to see you in person. Uh, and now we did tell the people, now if you guys didn't know, this is the first episode of our new format. We got a recording studio out here in Austin, Texas. Yep. Okay. I hit the plane last night, landed in Austin. I got a nice city view in the hotel, and we are recording episodes today. So we're so excited about doing this in person. But if you listen to the last episode, what did we tell them that our beards were going to do? Touch. Yeah. We thought we thought our beards were going to touch. But alas, they cannot. Yes. Thank you to the Austin City COVID codes. That's right. Uh, if you didn't know, the pandemic now has required our beards not to touch. They say, we, even though we're in the studio together... We still have to be six feet apart. And that we are. So and it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, man. It's so good to be able to actually see you with my eyes and talk to you, but it's a little weird because I'm used to kind of just staring at a random computer screen and, like, I can look you up and down and you don't really know. But now, if my eyes start wandering... Up here. Oh, up here. there you go. If my <laughs> eyes start wandering, then boom, everybody's going to know. But we got a really exciting show for you guys today. Yep. We're going to be talking about, uh, you know, obviously the new... Uh, format for the show, but more importantly, tell them what we're going to be discussing today for the episode. We are going to be talking about some of the worst horror stories of our crypto careers. <coughs> we're talking about accidental losses. Uh, I'm not really sure what you're going to get into, but man, I've got an intense one for you. Yeah, I, I've got a couple. Uh, one worth about um, eight figures of a loss. Damn. So yeah, really excited to talk to you guys about that. But uh, let's uh, let's jump in. Hey, hey, let's wax it. All right, guys. Now, if, if you didn't know, uh, I've been in crypto in, in Bitcoin since 2012. Uh, Jay, when when did you get in crypto? 2016. 2016. 2016. So in our career here in cryptocurrency, I'm, I'm, I'm full-time crypto. I think Jay's on the way to becoming... Oh, man, I'm about ready to hop right in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, you know, we, we got some stories. And mm -hmm. these are going to be some horror stories that we both experienced. I know I got at least a couple. Mm -hmm. I know you got a couple. Uh, let's go ahead and tell the people uh, about the biggest blunders that, that we made. Things that sometimes at night I randomly just wake up sweating, thinking about the money that I should have that I do not have for different mm -hmm. reasons. Oh, man. So go ahead, go ahead and jump in. T tell us, I want to hear one of your worst crypto nightmares. All right. All right. So this all goes back to 2018. Uh, this was before we had the big drop. So we're talking about the beginning of the year. I was into the Yobit spins. They say that they're probably fair. Well, you know what? They are not probably fair. This is all screwed up. So I'm there. And, you know, like you could just hit it at like, 0.01 Bitcoin, right? And yeah. Just, and just press, 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 and just keep going. And like, this know, is crypto gambling. Crypto. I mean, this is. I mean, you're wait, just, wait, isn't all crypto gambling? Anyways, yes. I but this is like true degenerate crypto gambling. And I'm just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And I go up and I go down. But I'm like, I'm I'm up a full bitty at this point. And something happens where the decimal point gets erased, and I spin for the full Bitcoin. And you obviously won, and now you got two Bitcoin, right? That's why this is a horror story. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so I lost it. I lost it all. You lost a full Bitcoin. Now, now, right now, Bitcoin's around $12,000. And this, 12, was a, this, this was in what year? 18. 2018. So Bitcoin was was what, around uh, $3,000 when this happened? No, it was 16000 Oh, 16000 Must have been the very beginning of this. This was before the drop. This is when, because, you know, Ooh. and, and you know, uh, most of my horror stories all have to do with all of the shit coins that I was getting at the yeah. tw at 2017, the beginning of 2018, that all went on to Daya's project. So everything that I made in that gigantic bull run in 2017, I lost. Wow. That's painful. I mean, that's... That's real money that, that's gone. Uh, you know, because a, a lot of people that I know, they get very hesitant to invest in cryptocurrency because of the volatility. Like, mm -hmm. even right now, like, my agent for my uh, for my TikTok account, CEO of Fax, uh, I have an agent there. It's totally separate than my crypto stuff. I'm trying to do more crypto things over there. But uh, recently, they've had some crypto projects reaching out to them wanting me to do some on TikTok. And my agents are terrified of it. They're like, no, no, we can't accept cryptocurrency. We can't accept Bitcoin. Really? Like. I'm like, guys, it's free money. You got to be kidding me. You don't want to accept it. Well, they're scared of the price dropping because there's the idea that like Bitcoin's like the zero sum game. Like if you invest money in it, there's a chance you'll lose it all. But that's not really the case. Like it might go down in price. If you got at the very, very peak, mm -hmm. you know, the, the value is going to go down for sure. Sometimes 
Uh, but you're talking about 100% loss. Gone. Gone. Like that. You know? So even some of those coins that you had at that time that were, you know, low amounts, you still got something there, you know? And maybe one day that dust can turn into something. Unfortunately, though, when you've got a full bitty, not not an itty bitty bitty. No, not a some big I'm not, bitty. I'm not talking a couple Satoshis, man. I'm talking 100 million Satoshis. Ooh. A hundred million sats. I don't like saying it that. That makes it even worse. It does. It does. Especially when you think about how much that could be worth uh, one day. Uh, and that's a bad loss. Well, let me tell you about my worst yes, loss. please do. In cryptocurrency. Because if you think a hundred million sats is is bad, what about losing eight figures in <laughs> crypto? Oh, God. Yeah. No. That's, I don't know if it's the heat that's making you sweat or if it's that story. It's your story. Because that story is pretty bad. So for you guys that don't know how I got into cryptocurrency, basically I got into, I guess you could say, internet entrepreneurship back in 2011. I had a ticket website, frontpagetickets.com. It was great. I was killing it. I started that company. I was working at a car wash in 2010. Beginning of 2011, I, I started, I was making six figures in like four months with that, with that company, killing it. And uh, eventually something occurred in my business where I had to actually start uh, making payments in Bitcoin for a software I was using. And this would have been in 2012. And over 2012 to 2013, I put five figures into Bitcoin. We're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But Some shekels, man. Some shekels, man. I was putting some big money into it. I was having to make a monthly payment. I was having to make you know uh, payments for the software in bulk. I was... I was getting a lot of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think of it as an investment. Funny enough, you know, when Satoshi created Bitcoin, what was it supposed to be? The, the cashless peer-to-peer -peer money system. Electronic cash system. You should know. Didn't you edit the white paper or proofread it? I proofread it, sir. Proofread let's, the white let's make sure we get that right. I was the proofreader yeah. translated from Mandarin over to English. That's right. Good job. I like oranges, too. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, also the movie Iron Man 3. So anyways, uh, the, the point here is, is that I was actually using Bitcoin in the early days for what it was supposed to be used for. And it wasn't Silk Road. I wasn't buying illegal goods. It was a software. If I had taken that money and not paid for stuff with it, and I had actually just invested in Bitcoin, understood, that's why I tell you guys all the time, it's important to understand what you're investing in. If I would have taken that money and just invested it during the bull run, the total amount of Bitcoin that I had over that time would have been worth eight figures. Yeah. Eight figures. Oof. Yeah. Big, big loss. So you guys saw that. But, you know, that's what got me into crypto, really. I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, it's one of those things. It's like the addiction. It's almost like, you know, that drug. When you hit it the first time, you're like, oh, man, that's fun. Even though it's. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, no, you stole my train of thought there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to steal it all day long. But I felt like all that money had been stolen from me. The gains had been stolen from me. And that's why, you know, in between 2013, when I sold out, I did sell out some of my Bitcoin. I made a few thousand dollars, not that much. Um, I sold it all before about Gox. Like, that's kind of the other part of this, which is if I wouldn't have sold out all my Bitcoin early, it was in Mt. Gox anyway. So you would have lost it. Would have lost it. Now, I do have a Mt. Gox settlement coming, but, you know, you're getting pennies on the dollar on that. I wouldn't have got the full amount. So I would have lost it anyways. That might have been an even more brutal story, you know? Right, right. If I had invested and then just lost it because Mt. Gox crashed. But when Mt. Gox crashed, I had actually just sold all my Bitcoin. And so from 2013 to 2016, like, I was following Bitcoin. Like, I'd put some money in it here and there, take some gains out. But I was never looking at, like, it was it was a long-term investment. But that's that's probably the worst horror story in the history of crypto is Mt. Gox crashing. I would say so. I mean, a lot of people got toasted. Yeah. Oh, BitConnect. BitConnect. Well, if you take the total amount that was lost in BitConnect compared to the total amount that was lost in Mt. Gox, if you took those individually at the time they were lost... Mm -hmm then I'm sure the amount of money for Mount, uh, for BitConnect would be more. However, if you took it in Bitcoin value, the, definitely Mt. Gox right. today would be worth a lot more money. I mean, I was like, God, I can't remember what the number was. Um, let me let me look real, real quick. Let's see, total amount of Bitcoin in Mt. Gox. I, I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was almost every Bitcoin transaction. That had, like, come up to that point, right? Yeah. Or 116. Well, it was... 
two hundred million Bitcoin. Jeez. Wait, what? Wait, no, no, come no, on. No, no, There's no, like twenty one million. Two, two. Yeah, that was a that was a mis- <laughs> Yeah, there was two hundred million Bitcoin on there, guys. Uh, this is where we actually get so two hundred thousand. I was only off by three zeros there. No. I'm glad you caught that, that that didn't even make sense because I probably would have just said it and not even caught it. Yeah, there's 200,000 Bitcoin on there, uh, around 116 million. This article was, can't find where. Do you know how many, how many addresses or how many people it affected? A lot, yeah. a lot. They're, they're refunding a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Who is? Mount Gox, the, the trustees from Mount Gox. Oh, okay, so, okay. But yeah, so, it, but we've got more horror stories. Like, that, that's the biggest horror story that probably happened in crypto. Obviously, we know BitConnect was a horror story that happened. I would say BitConnect's a lot different than Mt. Gox from the perspective. Mt. Gox was like, you just went to your computer one day and opened it up, and it was down. With BitConnect, there were several people calling from the rooftops, get out, get out, get out, before it crashed. Oof. You got, sometimes you just got to pay attention. Yeah. When, when, the, when the sign comes to you, just pay attention. Yeah. Well, it's the cult, you know, it's kind of the cult thing. That, that's one of the toughest things, in my opinion, about crypto is is kind of the, the cult shakeup, right? Yeah. So you get involved in these projects and you get you get married to your bags, Ugh. which is, I know, Jay's favorite thing to do. Oh, man. Thank God. I call I call Ben my spatula. BitBoy, he spatulated me off. Sure. I was, dude, I get was... Get you out of those bags. I was stuck, dude. I was emotionally... I wouldn't say physically, but I was definitely emotionally attached. Now, yeah. that's because... And this is, you know, this is actually my other horror story. Let's hear it. Okay. So... Uh, one of my first things that I did in crypto, um, I kind of went all in. I was actually working for an exchange. It was a uh, an exchange that was um, down in the Caribbean. I forget, you know, where they were. It was one of those safe havens. And so I was working for them. I was doing all of their daily YouTube videos. I was doing the marketing stuff. Got spatulated out of that thing too. Well, they kind of spatulated themselves. They yeah. they could they didn't have enough money. They didn't really get in enough time from the beginning of the bull run to build up a user base. Uh, so they're kind of late coming to market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was really slow. Didn't really kind of catch on. Um, but that's where I found out about this project that I got married to. Uh, so I was getting paid from the exchange, and I was immediately dumping the exchange coin for Apollo. Oh, you said the name. I did it. I, you know what? I feel I, I feel like at this point in my life, I can I can be honest about it, right? Because this was a real thing that happened. I got mm. sucked in. I know a lot of people else have gotten sucked in. It's very culty. You know, the community in some way is very toxic to outsiders. But anyway, so I was dumping everything that I was making, and this was for (laughs) about 12 months, into the Apollo coin. And I thought I was going to ride this thing to the moon. Ride it, ride it, ride it. Well, everything that I made for at least a year basically went to like nothing. I was so emotionally attached that I thought it was going to keep going. I thought it was going to get there. One day it's going to go. One day it's going to go. Man, I don't think this thing's ever even broken half a penny. Yeah, let's let's talk about something, and, and this is what I tried to, I tried to explain this to you uh, back when all that was going on, and and you listened, so I'm really really happy about that. You definitely did listen. Uh, there's something that I remember learning about in school, and it is called the sunken cost fallacy. Mm. Okay, the sunken cost fallacy. L- let me just read you guys uh, directly what it says from Wikipedia here. In economics and business decision making, a sunk cost, also known as a retrospective cost. Is a cost it's already been incurred and cannot be recovered. Sunk costs are contrasted with uh, prospective cro- costs, which are future costs that may be avoided if action is taken. In other words, a sunk cost is a sum paid in the past that is no longer relevant to decisions about the future. Even though econom- uh, economists argue that sunk costs are no longer relevant to future rational decision making in everyday life, people often take previous expenditures in situations such as repairing a car or house into their future decisions regarding those properties. And that right there, my friend, is the definition of getting married to your back. I was I was married. I was, man, I was like living in the honeymoon phase. Yeah. And then one day, divorce. But it's not, it, it, the thing is where the sunken cost fallacy really comes in is you, in your mind, you say, I've already invested so much time and effort into this. Right. You know, you just want it to get back above water. Make me feel good about all the time that I spent doing this. Yeah. But the problem is, is once it does, if it does get back above water, then you're sucked right back in again. Oh, she's like, oh, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. Yep. Yep. And we all know the story. We, we all know the story. And, and, and we know how these things end. And they're definitely not good. Uh, so, so, yeah, I think for you guys that do get m- married into these bags, married into these communities... 
Don't let that become your nightmare. Listen to Jay. Yeah. Listen to how free you feel uh, since uh, you got out of it. I, like, I remember, because this was, I mean, it was a couple weeks where it was pretty, you know, you were giving me solid advice daily saying, dude, come on, come on, come on. I was like, oh, no, it'll happen, it'll happen. But the moment that I said, you know what, he's right. The moment that that order filled and everything sold, hmm. it's like I felt the weight off my yeah. chest. That's most people feel that way when I tell them stuff and they do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, you know, they're just like, man, once I, li-, my wife especially, she's like, once I listen to you, hubby, <laughs> just kidding, she doesn't call me hubby. Um, shout, also, out, shout out to Mama Wild Things. Mama Wild Things. Yeah. You know, she's off Twitter these days. She okay. got off Twitter. Yeah, she got off Twitter because, uh, you know, I'm in an intense battle with, uh, with some people in crypto. And I was like, you know what? Let's just get you off Twitter. Let's no, get you off. No need to see the toxicity. No, no need, need to, to be around to that. Yeah. It's calmed down for the most part. A lot of stuff going on behind the scenes people don't know about. But um, let's let's move on and let's talk about my other horror story. I got so many. Like, I got hacked one time. That's a bad story. Oof. But I want to tell you guys about something that just happened. Now, if you've been following the channel, you pretty much already know about this. If you've been following my you know, BitBoy Crypto. If you listen on audio or you check out the Beards and Bitcoins podcast on the Beards and Bitcoins podcast channel, you may not know this. So a few weeks back, I made a call on a cryptocurrency called Small Love Potion, SLP. Now, I made this call because the price was so low. The price was very low. Um, right now, uh, the price on Coin, the total market cap on CoinGecko is coming in at $418,000. Now, when I made the call, okay, when I made the call on it, uh, the market cap was $75,000. So the market cap is 5x, but the way that the supply works into it, the actual value has not gone up, you know, tremendously. Mm-hmm. If I were to pull up the, let's see, 30 days on CoinGecko, it's up 165%. So that lines up about with when I talked about it. I mean, if you go look at the chart, you can kind of see when I talked about it and the price started going up. So it's up 165% since then. Uh, so what happened is I have another friend of mine that we do a lot of investing together. Uh, he's actually the guy who came up with the name BitBoy. Oh, nice. Yeah. And he got out of crypto for a while, just like the rest of y'all. Capitulators. Uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, P words. I don't really know what the best word to call you guys that's family friendly. Um, no coiners. No coiners. You a bunch of has you, you you a bunch of scallywags. I don't know what to call you. Okay. But this is what I'll say. He was just like the rest of y'all. He got wrecked and got out of crypto for a few years. Now, guess what? Bullish. He's back. Okay. Mm. He's back. And so we've been doing some investing together. We were doing investing together back in 2017 even. And uh, he had bought some SLP. And uh, he bought some for me as well. And I said, hey, send me some of this SLP. So he sent it to my wallet, but he accidentally did a double transaction. Do you know about this story, Justin? I don't think so. Oh, you're going to love this. This story is crazy. So he accidentally double sent it to me. He said, hey, can you send it back? I said, yeah, no problem. Well, the long and the short of it is I got confused on the difference between his address and the contract address for the token. Uh, yeah. And I sent it all back. I accidentally sent $3,500 worth of SLP to the contract address for the token instead of his address. Lost forever gone forever i didn't think so when it happened i said no problem i'll reach out out to the slp team i had never talked to them before but a guy on my research team knew them and so he reached out to them on discord and they were like sorry they gone we don't have access we we don't have access to that contract address we can't send it back and so i was like you got to be kidding me there's no way that's possible they have to be able to send it back well they started going like i started doing more research and talking to more developers and they're like if they don't set up the contract address with a certain characteristic in the smart contract, they have no access to be able to send or receive from it. Yeah. I mean, they can they can receive, but they can't they send. They can't send it out, yeah. So, you know, basically there's like $4,000 of my, you know, sitting in there, or there was at the time, and $3,500 of it was mine. So that means $500 of SLP had been randomly sent to that address throughout time. Can you believe that doesn't happen more? I bet it does, man. I bet it does. I know. I mean, I I sent, and this was, I don't know if you remember this. I think this was like one of those coins that popped into my uh, my Ether wallet a number of years ago. It was Piggy. Mm. Piggy coin. Old Piggy. Like one day I got 100,000 of them. Point, point. Yeah. And so I was trying to, I did the same kind of thing. I sent it to a contract address at, uh, I think it was on Bitmart. No, uh, some low market exchange or whatever. Yeah. Lost forever. Gone. Gone. 
Sucks, man. And, and, and you know, the thing about, just like when I got hacked, I got fished about two years ago. I lost about 2500 bucks. I think it's only worth about 400 now. But <laughs> that's the thing when you get hacked or fished or you send it to the wrong place, you'll be able to watch that crypto forever. Oh, it's so disappointing and so depressing. And so you have to forget it. You know, and that's like one of those same kind of things, you know, like when you get married to your bag and you unattach, like on Blockfolio, unwatch. What do I, what do I care? Yeah. Well, it, it's just sad that you can always, if you really wanted to go in and look, you know, yeah. you can always go in and look and things like that. Hey, that's that's my money. <clears throat> I can't touch yeah. it. Well, it's good, like, when I got fished and the money's down. So, you know, I'm like, ah, it's just 400 bucks now, you know, if I would have hodled it or whatever. But I could use that money to do other stuff with it. So, and, and like I said, guys, said, guys I, I did get fished one time, uh, you know, very early on in my content creation career in 2018. Lost some money, but you know what? It is what it is. You lose money sometimes. I tell people, like, some of these are the most valuable lessons. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you guys can learn from our nightmare stories. Mm-hmm. So don't, I mean, try not to make the same mistakes. Exactly. But you're going to make mistakes, and that's just part of the game. And that's how you learn to be your own bank is if, you know, one day you, you send the wrong thing to the wrong address or a little bit too much or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's how you learn. That's how you get better. And that's how you become more careful in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's... I think that comes to the end of the show today. Uh, you guys make sure you let us know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments. Give us some of your horror stories. Yeah. And, uh, and also, tell us what you think about the uh, the new digs. Boom. I mean, it's going to be hard for them not to love it. I agree, because I love it. That's it. All right, guys. Well, that is it. We will catch you guys on the next one. See you. Bye.